I'm Carl with Dynajet. In this video, I'm going to go over setting up your new DynaWire T electronics and PowerCore software for your Dynajet dynamometer. The first step in this process is to make sure you have the latest software and firmware installed on your computer and DynaWire T electronics. Your DynaWire RT came with the latest software and firmware available from Dynajet. As long as your PC is connected to the internet, the PowerCore software will prompt you if there's any updates available. I'm now going to show you how to make a basic Dyna run using your DynaWire RT and PowerCore software. But before we do that, I'm going to go through the PowerCore software and the applications that are within it, give you a brief overview of what they are and how they work. C3 tuning software is for use with Dynajet products like the Power Commander in conjunction with the Dynajet motorcycle dynamometers. This application allows you to create and edit Power Commander maps and includes the Dynajet tuning link software. WinPEP 8 Data Center is the application that is used to view Dyna runs created in Dyna Control and third party CSV log files. You can also open runs created in our older WinPEP 6 and WinPEP 7 Dyna software. WinPEP 8 Dyna Control is the main application you will use for making Dyna runs. This is the application you will use when configuring your Dyna run. Pod 300 is used to set up the Dynajet Power Commander Pod 300 LCD display accessory. Now that we've gotten our vehicle on the dyno, we're going to go ahead and get an RPM signal from it. One of the great things with Dyno RT is the ability to get OBD2 RPM reference. So we're going to go ahead and use our OBD2 interface to get that. You also have options to use the inductive as well as the optical. Since the Dyno RT module comes standard with four analog inputs, I'm going to go ahead and connect one of our analog sensor kits to this car to measure boost. I'll now be connecting the Dyno RT air fuel. This system has two sensors available for it, which means if you'd like to, you can measure bank-to-bank -bank air fuel. Now that I've fitted the vehicle with air fuel, analog, and OBD2, I'm going to go ahead and open my Dyna Control software and start making my runs. From here, you'll input your customer's information. You'll select Run File Information. This is a Ford Mustang. The model year is 2012. Customer name is Carl. An optional field might be something like methanol. From here you hit save. The next thing you can do is you can go to your configuration tab and you can select your RPM configuration. This vehicle is using the OBD2 interface but you can see we have other options for you like inductive, digital, inductive 2, and digital 2 as well as our Power Commander 5 line. We will keep it on OBD2. You may need to change your degree of plug fire depending on the vehicle when you start the vehicle up. The next thing would be analog configuration. From here you'd select the channel input, 1, 2, 3, or 4, we're on number 1. You'd select your preset gauge, which would be the Ashcroft negative 14.7 to 45 PSI sensor. You can change its name, then select OK. Your air fuel configuration can also be modified depending on what type of gas is in the vehicle. Since this vehicle is using gasoline, we'll leave this alone. If you happen to have a custom combination of fuels, you can change your stoic value and make it a new current fuel over here on the right hand side. SCT configuration, this is if you're using a third party input. Right now we're not having anything connected to the car. We're going to go ahead and use our own OBD2 configuration. From here you're going to see a list of channels that are supported for this vehicle. All you have to do is select OK. Now that the OBD2 is configured, let's assign some channels to these gauges. We're going to call this one Short Term Fuel Trims Bank 1. This one Short Term Fuel Trim Bank 2. I'm going to give it timing advance and intake air temperature. From here, I'll start the vehicle and monitor the channels in real time. Your Dynaware RT comes with a 10 button control pendant. It has a sample button, which is green a red button for brake, a yellow button to activate your Dynajet's load control, and a few directional buttons and an enter button in the middle. This control pendant is very easy to use, it's very basic, and you're able to do everything from the seat of the vehicle. We're now going to go ahead and make a couple of Dyna runs and show you the basics of the pendant as well as Dyna RT and review some data. Now that we've made our Dyna run, our data center application opens up automatically. As you can see, we have power, we have torque, we have air fuel, and we have our boost sensor that's all online. 
if we wanted to send this to our customers, we could set, select email, Facebook, or Twitter. We could print it from here. We can look at the print preview if we'd like. We can export the data as well as select one, two, or three graphs. Data Center is very similar to the WinPAP 7 software. So for existing dyno owners that choose to do an upgrade, this should be pretty familiar to you. For more information on DinoJet Dinos or DinoRT, you can go to www.dinojet.com.